Do you know that the periodic table of elements is organized according to increasing atomic number? In other words, the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. And since it's organized in this fashion, a tremendous amount of information can be gleaned about each element. One of those pieces of information being how exactly the electrons are organized within the atom. So let's learn a little chemistry. For any neutral atom, the number of protons must equal the number of electrons. The protons are easy. They're located in the nucleus of the atom. The electrons, however, are organized first by energy level and then into sublevels within that energy level. However, the periodic table can be used to determine both the energy level and the sublevel. First and foremost, the rows on the periodic table that run from left to right, they're referred to as a period. So the row running from hydrogen to helium, that's period number one. The row running from lithium to neon, that's period number two. Sodium to argon, period number three, and so on and so forth. Now the period number will correspond to the energy level for the electron. For example, hydrogen has just one proton, so it has just one electron. And that one electron is located in the first energy level, just like hydrogen is located in the first period. Your groups on the periodic table, they are your vertical columns. So your groups will help you determine the sublevel, where you have four total sublevels, the first one being your S sublevel. And your S block on the periodic table consists of group one, two, and helium. So these atoms will have valence electrons that fall within the S sublevel within the corresponding energy level. The next sublevel is your P sublevel. This is going to be located in groups 13 through 18, excluding helium. So these elements will have valence electrons that fall within a P sublevel within the energy level they're located in. Third sublevel, that is going to be your D sublevel, and your D block elements run from groups 3 through 12, so your transition metals. Last but not least, you have your F sublevel, and your F block on the periodic table is going to be those very bottom two rows, your lanthanides and your actinides. Now, not only do these blocks on the periodic table tell you the sublevel, but you can also determine the maximum number of electrons held within each sublevel. So, for example, your S sublevel can only hold two electrons within that level. So, if you take a look at your S block elements, there's two blocks across or two groups across within that sublevel, that corresponds to the fact that you can only have two electrons in the S sublevel. If we apply this to the P sublevel, if you take a look at that P block, there's six elements going across each one of those energy levels. And the P sublevel happens to hold just six electrons. In your D block, you've got 10 elements going across each one of those rows, and your D sublevel can only hold a maximum of 10 electrons. Finally, if you take a look at your F block, there's 14 boxes going across, and that corresponds to the fact that your F sublevel can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. Now, all of this information comes in handy when you have to write electron configurations and orbital notations. I hope a little learning has occurred here, and you continue to follow along for more chemistry content. Be well.